Last episode, Lady Arose sent her royal messenger, Fenalt, to each of the heroes with separate invitations to a grand feast in their honor for rescuing the missing children from Bloodmist. The heroes were each allowed plus ones, and Rowan invited his girlfriend, Gidzelda, to join the festivities. Roland made a 75 gold donation to the Queen's Grace Brothel in exchange for his girlfriend getting a night off. The adventurers visited the garment shop, Ted's tuxedos and dresses, to pick out fine clothes for their special night out. The group, with Gazelda in tow, arrived at the Royal Council Chamber, and were then escorted to the Royal Banquet Hall for the grand feast being held in their honor. Soren used his prestidigation spell upon arriving, giving his group a grand entrance filled with fireworks and a dazzling spectacle. Immediately afterwards, at Soren's suggestion, all party goers observed a moment of silence in honor of the children that did not survive the march from the Blood Mist camp to Queen's Grace. The adventurers spoke with the nobles and enjoyed the party. Vecni conversed with a high elf military official and discussed her position on the drow of Harganeth. The official told the story of Dakarth and his troops arriving in Queen's Grace to assassinate Queen Inez, but he ended up swearing his allegiance to her instead. Roland and his allies talked to Beerheer and Camembert about Snorian and Frank, as well as Hainsworth and Chaos. Boomadon and Vecni danced, while Honesty played a new song, a regaling tale of the heroes saving the children of Queen's Grace from the vile blood mist. Later, Lord Shelter made a surprise announcement, and he called forth suitors for each of the heroes to line up to propose betrothals. Both of Vecni's suitors were drow, and she spurned each of them. Sorn met his two suitors, a common-born human woman named Stefania, and Ragavad, a dwarven woman of House Harrington. He spoke with both women at length. Vesiesh met her first suitor, the cousin of Queen Inez, who spoke of joining his great house to House Swiftwater. While making his proposition, his arrogant demeanor led him to unintentionally insult Vess's house. She summarily dismissed the man. Vess's second suitor, Bargus, was a young half-elf merchant, but he did not live up to her expectations either, and she turned him away as well. Roland's first suitor was Cassandra, a brunette human woman with a warm smile and demeanor. Roland stayed true to Gazelda and turned the woman away, leaving her in tears. Roland rejected his second suitor as well, a high elf woman and Lord Shelter's sister, who was monotone and seemingly uninterested in the affair. Finally, the last of Roland's suitors approached him, a pair of teenaged girls. One of them was demure and seemed to be trying to seduce Roland, while the other girl was quite rude and insulting. After a brief conversation, they presented Roland with a gift. It was a small finger in a black box. The girls told Roland they were from Blood Mist, and they still had Camembert's only missing nephew, Tucker, in their captivity. It was explained they would ship Tucker off to Sofritas' kisses unless he and his allies did a task for Lord Craven. Further, the young girls told Roland if he was to harm them, the boy would be killed. The girls asked Roland to obtain the three keys, leading to the labyrinth beneath Pride Cutter Keep, and to open the way so Blood Mist could exit the fringe and return to the Abandon. The two Blood Mist agents left the feast, and as they exited, a third person joined them, a middle-aged looking human with a white goatee and a red suit. Roland alerted Lord Camembert as to what transpired. Camembert used his powers to watch as the trio left Queen's Grace. The middle-aged man removed his own face, revealing he was actually Lord Craven in disguise. Lord Camembert tasked Roland with rescuing Tucker at all costs. Soren spoke more with Ragavad, who offered a betrothal and the joining of houses Harrington and Swiftwater. Soren did not commit to the betrothal, but left things open for a betrothal in the future. Soren spoke further with Stefania, who lavished praise on Soren and his father, King Dogen. 
Soren explained there was only one woman he loved, and she was his mother, the Queen of Ferelden, Genlia Avacene. Soren told Stefania his mother's blessing would be required for any betrothal, and spoke of possibly having Lord Camembert transport Stefania to Ferelden to meet the Queen. Soren spoke with Camembert about casting the spell and he agreed. Camembert explained he would make the preparations on the morrow, and added it would take both he and Lady Rose to transport someone that far. Camembert also stated the spell would leave him without magic and in a weakened state for a few days. Vecni captivated all at the party, telling the tale of Sheen Roland defeating the Munronian Armada and Grand Admiral Gamino, impressing all in attendance. The black-skinned knight was overheard talking to the knight in white and gold armor about how he formerly led the 4th Legion of the Silver Swords, the Dark Knights of Vengeance, and how he came to Queen's Grace to serve Queen Inez, but was not happy here. Honesty sang a song about Teclis' life and death, while Vecni and Queen Inez danced, much to Lord Shilter's chagrin. Vecni told Queen Inez about Queen Marathi and the Sack of Coldbank, and pleaded with her not to trust Dakarth, but Inez insisted he was loyal to Slay. Vecni and Inez discussed potential husbands to sit beside the Queen. During the discussion, Vecni learned Inez did not care for love, she only cared for increasing her power so she could claim vengeance on Vigor for murdering her family during Vigor's conquest. Vecni and Inez bonded as Vecni also dreamt of vengeance, vengeance on the Drow Queen that destroyed her homeland. episode of Power Word Nerd. We are back with some more Dungeons and Dragons streaming on the Power Word Nerd Twitch channel. Yeah, the better Twitch channel. We have Kevin and Joe. Vecni Avumque and Soren Avacene, and then me, the DM. Uh, last episode, we had a grand feast in honor of the heroes saving all of those missing children from the blood miscamp. And the night, I believe the night ended. With Vecni going home with the queen. So we'll be, we'll be waking up early in the morning on Azuth 27th. And it's up to the players <laughs> what they want to do next. I suppose hungover, we'll go get breakfast. Can you put a sword up there? Not that it matters. I think that we should do the Lady of Rose one. It says, take, uh, find the blacksmith named Tiger Keg in Vigor Valley City. and She retrieved a ring from her pocket in clear stone setting. Have the pair forge a tiara and use the ring as setting for it. Seems pretty easy. We don't need a party of seven to do Famous that. Famous last words. Yeah, and that would make sense for our characters. Because you're not much of a fighter, nope. and I'm the only, and one fighter and not much <laughs> of a fighter is shouldn't go into like a dungeon trying to clear it out. I agree. So that However, would make sense. I am 400 XP away from Fireball, so that's the thing. Well, that was Fireball. Uh, four. I am, and then I'll get it for free because I have the scroll for it. I am uh, a thousand away from level five. So. Uh, Vecni will sit down to breakfast at the, t she'll go to, she would have stayed at the tavern, not the palace. So she'll be sitting down probably with Roland and the, those two would have stayed at the palace or the barracks, wherever the hell they were staying. They were staying in the barracks. And then after eating, Roland says he wants to spend time with his newly forged girlfriend. So Vecni will head back to the castle to find Soren and Vess. So it's the equivalent of like 8 a.m. Okay. So yeah, um, Soren will uh, ritual cast his unseen servant and use it to, uh, you know, after kind of like waking up and doing his morning stretches, you know, after his 10 minutes kind of go by, the unseen servant will then, you know, dress Soren in his typical fashion that it always does. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to ask for 
the sake of the group, right? I think I'm going to tell my sister that I'm going to explore the, the castle grounds and um, and then I'll ask her maybe to see what she can uh, do, maybe do the same. This way we're just separated and, you know, if we, ever, I like that. if we ever come back, you know, it's, oh, hey, I was off doing whatever. As a story, like if Brian was to play again, he would come back. That's why I said Roland, I like Roland is hanging out with his orc girlfriend. I dig it. So it makes sense. It makes sense why you guys might go off on your own. Yeah. So I was going to tell her I'm going to go explore the uh, the castle grounds, and man, who knows? We might run into another wacky member of our group. <laughs> the two of us set out on our own adventure. Maybe maybe a rose comes and finds us. So I'll find Soren. Okay. And I'll be like, oh, sorry, no, where's your sister? She's off making friends in high places. What are your plans for today? Make some in low. Say so that again. <laughs> what did you say? Make some in low. She's seek, she's finding friends in high places. Oh. What are you doing today? Oh, 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 oh I got you. I got finding you. Finding friends in low places. Where you guys? Where are you guys right now? Uh, the courtyard. So as you're speaking, you do see in the distance, uh, walking by, you see uh, Boomidon, that large hulking Goliath bartender. He's uh, walking. Just very gently holding the uh, tiny little hand of Lady Rose as she flutters in the air next to him. <laughs> Such a weird couple. You got a tiny peen. You know that did it on purpose. Of course I did. <laughs> He's gonna have some monster cock, and she's gonna be like, like this. I've seen those on Pornhub. It's really weird. <laughs> Joe, I, I like that you know where my mind is at. Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh. uh or in the distance, walking. Oh, is it Boomadon? And I'll, I'll head over to Boomadon. Well, was he at the thing last well, night? Uh, yep. Okay. They both were. So she'll walk over and she'll, like, fake punch uh, Boomadon in the gut. Oh, oh, Vecni. Good to see you, lass. Uh, did you have fun last night? Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, mean, I mean, it was okay. And he looks, like, nervously over at Rose. Didn't and she's kind of giving him this, like, dirty look. Can Wait, you, didn't I dance with him? Yes. Can uh, you remind me if a rose was sending messages to me and my sister? No. Like no. messages, like like telepathic messages? Not telepathic necessarily, but I feel like she was like... She sent that messenger to you with the invite to the party. Yeah, but I think there was something because of that too. Like there was something that like... She told you that she's been watching you. Yeah, and I think that we know that, right? But the other group you members You know that don't. now. Yeah, the other group members don't know that. Yeah. I believe only you. I think she told you specifically. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, uh... Remember when you walked with her alone to the towards the uh, library? I think mm -hmm. that's when she told you that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, in, in the same kind of fashion that, you know, he, he was kind of, like, playing around with that guy, um, when uh, Soren, like, kind of sees a road, he's, he's just kind of, like, kind of, like, nod to her, you know, and she gives a slight smile out of the corner of her mouth. And then she goes back to looking pissed off at Boomadon. Yeah. Uh, uh, Vecni notices Boomadon's nervousness. She goes, what's wrong with you? Uh, I, I, I'm supposed to tell you something, Vecni. Um, well, uh, I'm going to roll my um, importance. It, it was wrong of me to dance with you last night. Oh, I... I uh, I just want to apologize to both to both of you ladies for um, for doing that. That wasn't that wasn't appropriate. Why not? Well, I'm spoken for. I, I can't dance with other women. It wasn't romantic. He was just dancing. <laughs> well, that's not how it looked to me. <laughs> well, your jealousy aside, it was not romantic. Uh, her face grows a little flushed, and uh, she flies in the air. Like high? No. Oh. Just she's like she's like just a couple feet off the ground. She's still lower than Boobinon is. And then, uh, Vecni just looks puzzled and goes like, "How does this work?" Boobinon, what do you mean? Like, how does it work? But they both look at each other puzzled, and they both at the same time go. Vecni looks back at Soren. And you can see Soren is just looking exactly like how I am right now. Just. How do you fuck? They both look taken aback. And goes, Excuse me! What kind, of, what kind of talk is that? I am a lady. So am I. And you speak of 
fucking. Well, do you? Moving on, just bashful. Perhaps, perhaps this is a relationship based on uh, intellectual needs. It is a, it is a relationship based on emotions and love and caring. We love each other very much, but we don't have a physical. I mean, he's a Goliath, and, and I'm a fairy. And I respect that. That's why I was asking. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't work. Like well, that. I mean, you have magic. You could probably change your form. Well, I could, but I don't want to. Hmm? Okay. Well, um, I was talking to Vess, and she said something about a ring that you had given to her to get. Hmm, yes. There's a uh, there's a setting um, that I handed over to Vess and Soren. Uh, I wanted to have a ring made. There's this excellent black. Tiara. You had the ring. You wanted a tiara made. Oh, oh you're right. There was this uh, ring that I handed. <laughs> there was this ring that I handed to Vess and Soren, and I wanted to see if they could use the setting to make a tiara. There is an excellent blacksmith, even be even better than the one in Queen's Grace. His name is Tiger Keg, and he works out of Vigor Valley City. Oh my God, that's so far away. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Real great, you guys do move twice as fast now, and you have horses. And we have horses, so we move four times as fast. Yeah, so you well, move what? let's just hope that on the Six. way, marauders don't get us. You move 12 spaces a day now. All right. Well, don't, isn't there someone in the castle that is able to teleport people? Yes, but as he explained, doing that, teleporting someone a far distance will make him exhausted, and he won't be able to use magic for days. Gotcha, and he hasn't done it on my soon-to-be soon bride one day. That's correct. Gotcha. Mm. He could do it. Could do it. Um, perhaps maybe we can uh, see the queen, and maybe she can give us a royal escort. An escort for what? Our dangerous trip into Vigor Valley City. Well, are you scared? A little bit. Come on. <laughs> she punches him in the arm. I'll be with you the whole time. That's what you say. <laughs> Those are words that what came out of my possibly mind. go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly but I do, wrong? I understand. Uh, Lady Rose, is there any way we could get uh, companions to join us? She thinks for a moment. A couple of your angels or something? Mm, the journey to Vigor Valley City. Well, I don't think there's any soldiers that we can really spare, but you might be surprised to find some allies already in the city. What about Boomadon? Well, Boomadon is the blacksmith. He, or Boomadon is the bartender of our tavern. He, certainly, we can't spare him. So where would we be able to find these people that could escort us? Mm -hmm. In inside the city itself, there is a very large tavern. I dig it. Much larger than the one in Queen's Grace. Vigor it's, Valley. It's quite grand. Oh, excuse me. Vigor Valley. In Vigor Valley City, okay. yes. Inside the tavern, it is known. Since the, since the city was first established, it is known as a neutral type of zone where um, where combat and weapons are not allowed. Quite some time ago, the queen sent a small envoy into the city um, to seek out allies, and you should be able to find them already at the tavern where they are staying. In Vigo Valley? Mm-hmm. How does the us get there? It doesn't, but once you arrive there, you might find them to be helpful. Okay. Well, we still have our horses. We do. We do. Perhaps we can get the uh, Izo ride the horses or maybe get the wagon. It would give us sh shelter for the night. Mm, we would need a shelter. Well, I do have a tent. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. It's up to you, because I know that you are very, uh, <coughs> pretty. Yeah, I don't think so. Perhaps we take the, the horses, and um, uh, Lady Rose, if you could maybe gather the rest of our group and ask them to uh, meet us at Vigor Valley City uh, while... Uh, ah, see what I'm doing? I like, see, I like, I appreciate that, actually, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, Vecni and myself would like a, to get a jump start and get there as quickly as possible to get this done for you. Vecni will turn to uh, I appreciate it. to Boomadon and say, uh, Roland is probably using one of your <clears> rooms. <throat> and she smirks. 
Oh, okay. He didn't, well, pay, forget, he didn't pay for it. I forget I hear what that, that girl's name is. Zelda. I hear the one they call Kavari uh, polices the white... Kevlion. Kevlion polices the white fallen forest. Is that correct? Yes. Him, he, uh, you, you're asking the Rose? Yes. yes. Yes, him and his rangers, they, they do the best they can to call it of dangerous beasts, but it is quite a wild forest. It is. Perhaps they can uh, monitor the trail for us as we, uh, as we head? I'll have Lord, I'll have Lord Kevin uh, send him a message. I ah, see, this way. They can, you know, their own thing. Do, do an They only thing. do like this little. What do you mean? The white fall forest is all the way down there? They go all the way down to here? Fuck yeah. Oh, Kevlin? Yeah. Shows they, it on the map. They do, but as you've seen throughout the forest, they're not doing a great job. No, I mean, I just fought a bunch of hyenas. Yeah. But but they do. They, they patrol the whole you, area. You were there when we were fighting hyenas. Yeah. The woods are very dangerous. <laughs> You're invisible. All right. Well, while we still have daylight, perhaps we should. Uh, let's receive our horses. Needs horses. You guys have horses, right? We have horses. Yeah, they're at the stable. Let's ride. Okay. So we'll head to the stables, get our horses, and start heading out. Cool. How many spaces are between you and the exit of White Fawn Forest? What's the exit of White Fawn Forest? Uh, I can't see the map. I would assume after that second bend over here? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, forty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. So 12, two, three and a half days. Three and a half days. All right, Joe, make one single unmodified D twenty. Mm -mm. This will be for all three days. You want to roll dice? Nope. Okay. Ten. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything that you want to do during your travels, or you just want to get there? There's nothing in these forests. That well, we do of. we do pass the houses that are all vacant. Where? Yep. Where we like? Yeah, but what buried bodies and stuff? Do you want to do? I'm just saying. No, no. There's, oh, nothing, okay. there's nothing I want to do there. <laughs> all right. So, uh, if there's nothing you wanted to do, then those three days pass uneventfully. Wait, before we leave, I, I need to refill my food. I didn't buy food. Uh, and you could you could deduct your food stores for the three days. Sure. What is it called? Rations, probably. Rations. Rations. Yeah. All right. So I'm at seven now. I'm going to say that I've bought... If you want to pick some up at the general store. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying before we left, I, I got rations. Okay. I'm going to buy... So how long They're not would it technically say to get there? Well, it would be three and a half days to get out of the White Fallen Forest, and then however many more days to reach Bigger Valley two, City. Three, four, Probably another two days after that. Yeah, all right. So I'll get... I'll get... 15 oh, rations. Comes the money. One, two, three, I'm flush. Five, I have none. Seven, eight, yeah, about, I'd say I'd say about an, uh, uh, almost exactly two more days. Oh, I'm gonna get fifteen total rations. All right, so we get out of the white fawn forest. What do we call it? The Chipotle. Chipotle Woods. Chipotle Woods. You Chipotle Woods. <laughs> so we get out of there, and what happens? So if you're not making any stops or anything around day four, you're you're just going the most direct route, right? Yep. Yeah. Let me get get that thumbtack real quick. Day four would put us like kind of like halfway between where we exited and Vigor Valley City. So you'd be you you would probably take this path, right? Yep. Okay. Seems the most direct route. Okay. So when you're around, so when you reach around this this area, you see you're not that far away from Vigor Valley City, but you do notice back in the directions where Surf's Tavern once stood, the the tavern that you guys burned down mm -hmm. to fight Forte, you see smoke coming from that direction. Still? And Small you dude. don't know if that's the same smoke or if it's Can't be, because that was weeks see, ago. You that's see smoke coming from that direction. That's all. Should you choose to go that way? You can, or you can just keep going the way you're going. Do what your character, whatever your characters would do. Well, I'm no hero. Okay. Is this, is this smoke isn't... Is that what... We burn down that building? 
I believe so. But there's an aroma in the air. It kind of smells like barbecue. Is that true? It, it, the smoke would be kind of far away, so you wouldn't oh, okay. would be able to smell it. Um, so there's no way that it is still burning. No, you're correct. It's been weeks. Whatever is causing that smoke is being deliberately done now. And that is... How many uh, spaces do we move? 12 a day? 12, 12 you, a day. With your horses, you move 12 a day. That's about two spaces away from you. Perhaps we take a detour. Perhaps. Let's just remember to keep a sharp eye about. Um, after all, you are responsible for the tavern being burnt down. Then I should have got all the XP. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we'll, we'll head there. Yeah, we'll take a little detour. Okay. So as you uh, get closer, so let's say now you're one space away, you could see that the uh, smoke is getting thicker and it's billowing into the sky. So this isn't like smoke from like an old fire or something like that. This is like, this is probably like an active fire that you're heading towards. Hmm. Was there, what, was there anything around the tavern, like a village or houses or something? No, there was not. Hmm. And the tavern burned down. It burned it to completely collapse. Do we notice if the smoke is coming from like the road, the path that we're on, or do we notice that it's kind of coming out from everything as if to indicate maybe the woods around us are on fire? Uh, it seems to be uh, pretty clear that it's not a forest fire. It seems like it's concentrated in one small area okay. based on where the smoke okay. is. Perhaps this is, uh, was it Forte? Forte. Yeah. Perhaps there is a uh, Forte camp down there. As you guys are, are pondering what's going on, coming towards your direction in the sky, you see um, a figure. Is it that fucking arrow crow cross? Shoot him. You see a figure, and it looks like it's on fire. Oh. And it's getting closer and closer, and it's about 200 feet away now. 200 it's feet? It's a figure, like a person? Well, you roll a perception. Your DC is a 12. What is my perception? Crit 20 plus 5. Okay. So you can make out to be some, you can make out that it's some kind of arm, heavily armored humanoid figure riding on a flaming horse. Oh, some beanie. <laughs> <laughs> the, armor, the, armor, the armor of the horse and the rider are mostly red with pieces of orange. What the fuck is that? Looks like the devil incarnate. <laughs> Uh, Vecni is going to just look at um, Soren and be like, come with me, and I'll fucking whip my horse and lead him straight into the woods to get me out of sight. Are you close to the woods there? I don't nah. fucking know. You're nowhere near, there's no woods oh, near you. that's where we are? Yeah. But we were... Um, yeah, there's no woods near you at all. All right, so I can't do that. So what is all this, like, planes? They're open planes. Okay. Uh, is, the, is it heading straight towards us? With you, with your role, I would say that you're aware it's not moving exactly towards you, and it's it's kind of high in the air. I would put it about forty feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. So about two hundred feet away, forty feet up in the air, and it looks like it's it's not going directly towards you. It looks like it's more going in your direction. So does it, so do we notice that it looks that we think it noticed us to begin with at all? Even with your roll, I would say it's too hard to determine from 200 feet away. Okay. All right. Is there any cover bias? Yeah, there are um, some large boulders about 25 feet uh, to your left. Okay, well then I'll do what I did, but instead of going to the tree line, I'll go over to the boulders. Okay. Mm. Should we have your roll here? While you're, mm, while, you're roll, while you're rolling an agility check to see if you can get out of the way um, before he reaches like 100 feet away from you. <clears throat> Your agility uh, DC will be 14. Agility. What's agility? Athletics or ac acrobatics? Agility. Acrobatics. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's go with ac acrobatics. Nine. Nine? Okay. So you're, you're not able to get out of the way before he's like very obviously in range of seeing you. Um, but now he's now he's like less than 100 feet away and still flying in the same direction, not directly towards you. 
um, but you do see a little bit more, a little bit more of this individual. Uh, this cloaked, this, this our heavily armored rider. Not only has, does he have this heavy armor, but draped over his armor is a red cloak. Um, he's got a great axe uh, strapped to his back, and you can even make out a little bit of his face. His face has like a, a, a like a there's like a face shield, like this weird looking type of visor over his face, but you can make out what almost appears to be uh, the face of a half orc, and you see this sigil on his cloak. Oh, it's otherwise so we're gonna kill it. We gotta fucking kill it. Best of luck. I'll do it. I'll shoot him in the eye. Yeah, that'll work. Damn. Would uh, Sora know what that means? You recognize that there were dead soldiers that were Forte amongst their banners, were Forte banners and this banner. But we don't know what that banner was. You do you you have learned that this is the this is the banner of vigor itself. Vigor so it's not itself. it's not the forte banner. It is the overall encompassing of vigor. Okay. Which is where we're off to anyway. Okay. This is the sigil. It's the sigil of vigor. Not the for, not the for, not forte. Just vigor. Vigor. Yeah. So Queen's Grace is run by forte, correct? No. Queen's Slay. Grace is run by Slay. Slay. Where you're going, Vigor Valley City is, is run, run by, by Vigor. Vigor. Yeah. And then Forte is run by the original place we came from? Nope. And Forte is part of Vigor. It's one of the branches. One of the branches. Vigor has three branches, oh, okay. which, you learned, which you did learn when you got to the continent. Gotcha. But it hasn't been mentioned in a while. So we, we recognize the Vigor sigil. You would, you would recognize it. And do we, did we recognize that as friendly people or no? Well, you did fight and kill a bunch of them uh, that are representing Forte. In, in that, in the wait, tavern. Vigor is representing Forte. Vigor is the the overwhelmingly the leaders of the currently the Kingdom of Dova. They control the kingdom. And they have three branches, one of which is Forte, which you fought Forte soldiers already. Mm. But that is not the Forte sigil. That is just the Vigor sigil. Okay, so Vigor, the Forte works for Vigor. Yeah. Okay. Or their banners under their banner. They're, they're, yeah. So think, think of it how like think of it like this. If like go, go to Game of Thrones, right? When Rob Stark called his banners. Yeah. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Think yep. of it like that. Right. Do we notice if he noticed us? He definitely. Well, yeah, yeah. He definitely. When you failed your check, now we now we know he noticed us. Okay. So uh, Vecni is going to just pull her bow out and just wait. He's flying even closer. Now he's about 20 feet away from you. Is he still in his original... He didn't change his direction. So uh, Soren is going to use Minor Illusion. Okay. Um, he's going like, to kind of like put his hand up like this and like have his wand out. He's going to like wave it around. And he's going to create this like 30 foot like flat kind of plane that goes over, like, over us. <laughs> right? And it's going to kind of go give you like that opaque kind of coloring to the air, um, kind of like a, like a bubble. You ever blow a bubble? Yeah. And you see it, and you see all the colors in, like, the bubble? Yeah. Right? I'm going to have it do that over us. So you did that in front of him? Yeah. Well, like, over, no, it's, like, directly over us. So almost like to, I want it to appear as if there's a magical barrier in front of us mm. without there being actually any magic. Oh, so you're making it look like a magical barrier. Yeah, yeah. Roll, roll performance. Your DC is 14. 14 performance. Plus one. Well, I rolled a six total, so I'm going to change that to a 20 plus one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so he notices you do it, and he looks he looks over uh, directly at you when you do it, looking right at you, Soren, okay. directly at you. And he fly, he starts to pass you. That was clever. <laughs> I try. What can I say? <laughs> I guess being scared of fighting is all. It's good at some things. He was like that, going invisible, bro. <laughs> and it feel like even you just yet. Right, so I'll wait till he's mostly out of sight. Okay. And then I'll mount my horse and I guess continue towards the smoke to see what it was. All right. Um. Oh, uh, just one thing that uh, I should have mentioned. When you got when you got 
really close to this rider. You did observe something kind of strange, aside from the axe strapped to his back. He had this very queerly, uh, uh, he had this gauntlet that was a very queer pink color, almost in a, a color that you don't really see. It's queer. Okay. I don't mean queer like homosexual. <laughs> that's not, that's not what I, mean. I mean queer as an unu odd. unusual it's weird. Odd. Yeah, yeah. This very odd color that, that is just very uncommon for West. So, when you get closer to Surf's Tavern, you see quite a scene. You see um, several uh, wagons and banners burning. Oh. Several, like several dozen, like quite, quite, a, quite a few, quite a bit. Uh, the banners that are burning are, you also see a multitude of men hanging from nooses. This is the one sigil. Oh. The people that you're there, to, that you came to answer the call for. Mm -hmm. uh, you, see, you see quite a few men hanging from nooses. You see dead horses laying on the ground. Uh, you see other corpses laying on the ground. Men like that and men that you recognize as wearing uh, forte colors and sigils. So can um, we ascertain there was a big battle? There was a battle. Not as large as the first battle that you guys had witnessed the aftermath of when you first arrived. Much smaller. But there was another fight here. Um, and also, you notice <laughs> the forte banner is not burning. And there were quite a few forte banners in the ground in this area. You also see several soldiers standing alive and healthy, near the hanging men with the nooses that are hanging, uh, wearing, wearing forte colors and banners. And amongst them, there was one single, what appears to be a knight, wearing this splendid red armor with a flowing black cape, a red gray helm, you know, with those, those tall, like, spiked horns. Uh, but the, the face of the helm is shaped like a demon head. What's a demon head shaped like? It's the face of like a demon, uh, like a design. And who is this on? This this knight wearing splendid red armor. Gotcha. Uh, they're all standing near the men from the nooses, and they're kind of preoccupied with them. And they seem to be like standing around talking and like just talking to each other as one soldiers hang, swaying back and forth. Is there the a, a large group of like normal soldiers there too? No, the only the only people living that are present are about a half dozen. Uh, Forte soldiers, and then that knight wearing red. That means six. That's correct. So there's six including the guy, or six in Not the Not including guy? him. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it looks like there was quite a bloodbath here. They don't appear to have noticed you. Well, I'm not worried. I don't have any one sigils on me. Okay. <laughs> and we noticed the burning one sigils? Yes. And all that stuff? Yep. And there are wagons uh, as well that are endured with one colors. They're, they're burning. Perhaps this could be an opportunity to make friends in low places. Well, I do have this, and she pulls out a letter that was signed from the guy in, that was working for Forte. Yeah. Giving you, giving you passage to, wasn't it passage to Vigor Valley City? Something, I don't remember what yeah, it was. I just have, was. I have a note from Forte. That's what I wrote to, in to, my notes. To see Frank Mandred in Vigor Valley City for something. I forget what, what, he, what you wanted I have to see. Note from Vigor. Note from Vigor. Hey. So he goes, so, why don't we head over and make some little friends? So we'll just trot up. And as we get closer, Vecni will... Tip her hat. She'd be like, hello, gentlemen. Uh, they all stop talking to each other and they all turn to face you. They go, identify, and the, the man in the red armor uh, goes, identify yourself. Who are you? My name is uh, Captain Vecni Avamque of the uh, Tuscal Pirates. What are you doing here? Who do you serve? Well, I serve Captain uh, Golden Tusk. He tips his head down, crosses his arms like this, and just starts tapping his arm. Captain Golden Tusk, you say? Isn't he employed by one? He's employed by whoever pays the most gold. What's your business here? What are you, what are you doing in Dover? And who is that? This is my servant. His name is Soren. He wears pretty fancy clothes for a servant. 
I do wear fancy clothes. Oh, I forgot he didn't. Uh, this is my concubine, Thorin. Is he your concubine or your servant? I forgot he wore fancy clothes. Fine. Too soft. Fair enough. <laughs> um, what do you want with us? Uh, we were just on our way to uh, Vigo Valley and we noticed the plumes of smoke. We mean no harm. What is, what is your purpose in Vigor Valley City? I heard it was a good place to be. They have a huge tavern. Hmm. This is true, but it's not the kind of place you could just walk in. It's a closed city. Outside, outsiders aren't welcome. Well, I... It's owned by Vigor, or it's controlled by Vigor. You could surmise that, but you, you don't really know. Well, I have... I have met one of your men... I forgot his name. And I have this note from him to let me into Vigo Valley. Takes a note. Hmm. Frank Mandred. He and I, he and I co-run Vigor Valley City. Interesting. What is your business with Frank? I had a couple of drinks with him. At this, and she looks over at the burnt husk of the tavern. Well, this establishment, I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. Was this part of the casualties of your fight? No, this this must have happened before. Uh, they they've been saying for a while that Serf's Tavern was a respite for rebels and revolutionaries. We were gonna we were gonna burn it down anyway, but something must have happened. Some of our men were found dead inside, burned alive. I don't really know. Oh well, I met uh, Frank Mandrake uh, weeks ago, and we had a couple of drinks and a good time. Frank Mandrake dying here? Oh yeah. No. He got away? He wasn't there. They talked about him. He's one of the, he was one of the leaders of Vigor. Then how did he of, sign... Not Vigor, of Forte. Then how did he sign the letter? He didn't. It was one of his subordinates that did. Oh. oh. So who the fuck gave it to me? One of Frank Mandrake's subordinates. Oh, then Some I'm... Guy. I, don't, I don't remember his name. Oh, I don't either. He, he's, he, that guy is definitely dead. <laughs> oh, so then I didn't... I don't know Frank Mandrake or whatever. But you're making a good story so well, far. I thought that was... Know. I thought that was the name of the guy that... Gave me the note because well, you better start figuring this shit out. <laughs> you already said it. You're in too deep. How, how do I? How, phones. how do I know? How do I know that you two haven't been collaborating with the one rebels, and Slay, and Clad, and Frank, and Chaos, and all these groups that are trying to oppose our rule? Do you see what I am wearing, sir? Does yeah. it look like? Yes, I tr- collaborate with any of these people. You're definitely dressed like one of the men of Queen's Grace. Look at, you, look at you with your fr- frilly clothes. My wife and... Wife? Concubine? Concubine. Girlfriend? You're my concubine. Girlfriend? Nope, concubine. <laughs> <laughs> we are connoisseurs of all kinds of ale. Uh, her and I like to take extravagant trips. And uh, we visit different places all over the world. Uh... Trying to drink and partake in whatever kind of lavish activities every area has to offer us. Yep. We are on our way to Vigor Valley City now to see what it is that place has to offer when it comes to drink and food and extravagant banquets of all kinds. Uh, on our way, we simply noticed the soak and curiosity peeked through us. We only just left this tavern a few weeks ago. We saw we would stop by for a, a little respite and we saw these plumes of smoke. He looks he looks over to his right, looks over to his left, and uh, all of his men put their hands on the hilts of their swords and they ease them out just a little bit. And he says, and how exactly did you get to Dova? To Dova? Mm-hmm. I was on my, my sheep. So your story is that you traveled to Dova with Captain Golden Tusk. Correct. Transporting enemy soldiers to our lands. And now you and your concubine <laughs> are going to the heart of our city to try out ale. And you expect that to be a story I will believe? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm a, the, I'm reason a why I, the reason why I wouldn't believe that is because my name is Karaganda. I am one of the two leaders of Forte. 
one of my prime duties is to find traitors and rebels and other scum and eradicate them from the face of this world. Okay. Give me a good reason why I shouldn't strike the two of you down right now and hang you. Hold on, so you want me to prove to you that we like to uh, drink and party? The, uh, the, the, the six soldiers, three of them fan out to the left and kind of do a semicircle around you and three go around the same. Yes. <laughs> okay. So she <laughs> reaches into her bag and she pulls out. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see how many bottles of liquor I have on me. Inventory. She pulls out a bottle of Nectar of the Sea, the wine. She pulls out a couple bottles of those. She pulls out a couple bottles of whiskey. She pulls out a couple bottles of other liquor. And while that happens, uh, Soren again casts Minor Illusion. And uh, as she's, she's pulling out the bottles, uh, things like sparklers and streamers and like party fairs are coming all out of the bag, uh, making this big grandioso kind of like a like glitter in the air almost kind of thing, as if to simulate a party. And she pulls out the last bottle of uh, of um, nectar of the sea, and she goes, "Try it for yourself." And she's, the last one. I have a bunch, but. One, the last one she pulls out of her pack and she throws it to the, whatever his name was. Caragonda. Yeah. So Caragonda reaches out and catches it with ease. He looks at it and he says, I don't drink. And he hands it to one of his subordinates. Enjoy, boys. Why don't, Joe, why don't you roll a performance for what you did? And Kevin, why don't you roll a persuasion? Crit 20. Natural An actual quick one. Actual quick okay. one. So your your display, the fireworks and everything. Um, Caragon doesn't Check move. It out. He I doesn't. I he, saw it. Oh. He doesn't move. He doesn't react. He just stands stoic. But his men are all looking at like in wonder, like wow, oh this is so cool. And would you would you roll? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Um, Does it pass? Wait, was I persuasion or performance? Yours was, it was persuasion. All right, fourteen. Does it pass? What was what pass? Does it roll? I didn't give him a DC. No. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you the reaction. So. Well, I can change the reaction. Oh. So I need to know if it was a passive. He, 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 rolled, he rolled high enough to, to succeed on that. Okay. So, uh, so Karagana says, men, you, you may party with, you may party with these two. <laughs> let's, let's see if they are really here for what they claim to be. Oh, I've about to drink six boys under the table. He, Karagana draw, draws his sword and just holds it like this and just stands. And they look like uneasily, and they just start taking the liquor, and they just they start they start to drink it with you all. Uh, Sword again is going to use minor illusion. Um, you know those little like poppers that you used to. Yes. You know, uh, uh, it's going to be like a like thirty or forty of them now are just all in different kinds of directions, making a pop, 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 and little 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 streamers are all coming out of everywhere. Vecni's going to pack up some of the liquor, but she's going to have a bottle of whiskey in this hand and a bottle of rum in this hand, and she's going to walk up to each soldier and ask them what they want. And if they say whiskey, she'll use shape water or whatever that spell is yeah, to, shape water. Yeah. to move a shot of whiskey into their mouth. And then if they say rum, she'll just do that and walk around like shooting shots into these dudes' mouths. Uh, Sora is going to use... <laughs> Sora is, Sora is going to use... Uh, shooting shots is gay. <laughs> so, so, well, so you said we shoot shots in these dudes' mouths. Sora it's is a girl. Gonna, Sora is going to use uh, mold earth. Um, and on like these uh, like chairs are going to come out from underneath the ground almost. And all the soldiers are going to be like... Look at like, that's using cantrips. Like, yeah, literally sitting, they, they go... Poof. Yeah, sitting. Every single soldier, soldier starts to sit. And then I'm going to like continue right. to like spin my wand a little bit, and all the chairs are going to kind of like come down in like this like area. And then right in the middle of everybody, I'm going to use uh, mold earth again. I'm going to raise almost like a like a banquet table um, up. It's going to be made of dirt, but and Vecni's going to be on the banquet table as it lifts up, and she's just passing liquor off to these boys. So this guy, Kamenberg or Kaninger, <laughs> whatever his name was, Karaganda. Karaganda is just watching as these six dudes are sitting three by three, with Vecni walking back and forth in the middle of the table, with fireworks and Twizzlers and shit going off, and just shots shooting out of her her bottles of liquor into these dudes' mouths. We know how to get down. 
So he said he's so when you first started, you can make music too. Is it music or sounds? Sound is music. I mean, music is sound. I mean, I guess when when you first started this display, he again he was tapping his arm really impatiently, <laughs> <laughs> like this. And as you 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 were having fun with the soldiers and making a big display, he kind of stopped, and then his arm stopped being crossed, and eventually he put his sword away. Um. Beckney starts passing shots to herself, and then she slings one at Soren. In his mouth? Soren just takes it. No, it's it's literally just a liquid just flying at you. Oh, <laughs> Soren does one of these like as if to like catch it, like. So it takes his first drink of this entire campaign. <laughs> Saved your life. He oh, was it your first drink of this campaign so far? Oh wow! <clears throat> I've, I've not partaken in any alcohol. Up until this point. It's not that Soren doesn't drink, it's just everyone else is like alcoholics. <laughs> Mostly just Vecna. Mostly just Vecna. Soren's kind of like, soon, like purposely not taking drinks from her. <laughs> so as his men start to r really fall into a drunken stupor, he says, well, you did a good job of getting all of my men drunk. I'll permit you to leave and keep on your way towards Vicar Valley City, but... I will be sending word ahead to keep an eye on you. Don't make me regret my decision. Why would they make you regret your decision? Just know that if you do, and I catch you, it will be horrible. Well, of course I would not want to be smudge your, uh, your kindness. He turns over his shoulder to look at the men hanging, and he goes, Their fate is nothing compared to what will wait for you. Are you saying that you're going to do worse than hang me? Mm. I mean, I don't know why you would hang somebody for drinking. You misunderstand. If you are lying to me, and I find out, I will come for you. You will die a most horrible death. And there's no, there's no humor in his voice. There's no joking around. There's no... You could, you could tell he means what he says. Uh, Fekni feels a shudder down her spine, but she doesn't play like she, she doesn't play it off like she's a, a little intimidated by this guy. She goes, I have nothing to fear from you. I have no ill will towards Vigar or Forte. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You would find it difficult to make a commotion in my city anyway. It's, it's run very well. Good. I've been to a lot of cities, you know, a lot of places. You'd be, a you'd be surprised of how badly cities are on. Rapid crime, prostitution. You mentioned the, the tavern in my city. Mm -hmm. When you get there, find Lorgan and tell him I sent you. He'll Mor set you. Morgan? Lorgan. All right, so this guy's name is what? Caraganda. Spell it. And a K like as in Kilo, A as in Alpha, R as in Romeo, A as in Alpha, G as in Golf, A as in Alpha, N as in November, D as in Delta, A as in Alpha. Caraganda, and he's the leader of Forte? He's the, <clears throat> yeah, he's one of the two leaders of Forte. And Frank Manager's the other who you already heard about. But that was like the second session of this campaign. <laughs> And he wants us to find Lorgan. He says that if you go to the tavern and find Lorgan, tell him that uh, he sent you. And he'll set, he'll set you up nice. Well, I appreciate that. Would you like to join the old boys at the bar? And she's standing on the dirt table. No. Well, you don't have to drink, but you could have a seat. And she looks over at Soren. So, Soren, understanding the meter of this gentleman, rather than just having a chair pull up from underneath him where it makes him sit uh he's gonna have the chair like kind of like come up behind him and then gradually kind of like move forward and once it gets to his legs it'll, it'll just stop he notices your magic and he uh says while i do appreciate the gesture i do not sit when there are strangers about well we are not strangers we introduced ourselves we have shared drinks with your men Yes, you've convinced me to let you go, but don't push your luck. 
Fair enough. <clears throat> um, and then kind of like, just like that. Um, so we're leaving now, right? What time of day is it? I'm going to say it was around midday when you first start traveling towards um, this area. So well, there are two spaces. We're going to say it's like nine at night. So it's yeah. like starting, okay. it's like dark. Yeah. Well, clearly these guys don't want us around anymore. So probably now that time to end the party. Well, are the soldiers hammered? Yeah, they're drunk. Okay. The only one that's not drunk is Caragata, who didn't drink anything. Well, um, it's been a pleasure, sir. If you would like, we can take our liquor away from your men and head out of here. He nods and says, What? For what? Smile, it's Forte. That's their thing? It's one. He's, yeah, it's the short one. I don't remember the long one. Okay. So, uh, what Sora would like do... Like these smiles awkwardly. Do I have it written down somewhere? Sora, oh. Sora as if to clean up the party. I forgot I had it up here. That's a so, terrible catchphrase. Sora <laughs> understanding the uh, the quick exit that we need to make now. Um, kind of like takes his wand again and kind of like starts to spin it around. And uh, all, 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 everything starts to like clean up pretty quickly uh, with the mold earth. Uh, the table goes away. The chairs that the guys, I assume, are all sitting in kind of like passed out. Uh, they're not passed out. Okay. Still, you believe right. that now c- kind of turn into like lazy boys and like the things are going to pop up and they're going to like <laughs> yeah, walk, you, yeah, you can. relax sure. a little bit you know um and then, yeah he's gonna you know kind of like keep doing his thing clean up some of the area a little bit uh and then just get back on his horse okay they they don't make any moves to stop to you caraganda just is kind of standing watching you yeah all, all the minor illusion stuff it all kind of like dissipates uh, Vecna will hop on her horse and be like, Till we meet again, Lord Kalganda. She takes her hat off. It was a pleasure. He nods. She Jesus. puts her hat back on and starts it, riding away. It was nice to meet, as you, as you leave, he goes, It was nice meeting you too, Golden Tusk Pirate. And concubine. <laughs> and uh, as we're, we're out of earshot of Karaganda, she goes, You make a good ca- uh, concubine. I didn't know you had it in you. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta knock off two bottles of liquor. So if you guys don't have anything else to do, uh, on Ill Matter the second, you guys make it to the beginning of that valley leading to. Um, well, we have long rested between this. You would have yes. Because it's already nine o'clock, correct? So we would have to set up shop and. I, I was I was putting you forward two more days, but if you want to if you want to do all that, it's important for me because I need to okay. roll my portraits. That's fine. Um, also, um, you know, if we got any XP for that, I can really use. Oh, it. you know what? I yes, can, really you do it. you do get XP for that. Because um, I I could. So you were meant to fight those guys. So we're gonna say you're gonna get the XP for. Okay, let me give you the XP for that encounter. So you're each gonna get six hundred. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> That's a level up right there. So, so, cause you did, you did beat the encounter with your high high social rolls, and I don't think I should punish you for doing good with that. Yeah, like, God that damn right. Sense. Damn it, punish you, and not give you XP for for avoiding a, a hard fight. I don't think that makes sense. I think a hard fight with two people is a bad idea, especially if one of them is not a healer. You probably couldn't win, but may, maybe. Do you still have the wand of healing, or gave it to Brian? Five and a four. Uh, I do not have a wand of healing. Ah, oh, fucking shit. Yeah. So we're not going there. So this time I rolled a five and a four. You enter this valley. Um, there, there are two like high cliffs on both sides uh, as you travel towards the uh, Vigor Valley City. Towards the entrance of the valley, you see these... You see that the entire way across, there are wooden stakes... There are like wooden fortifications that look like they were just very hastily and recently put up. You see there are dozens, literally dozens, of uh, Forte soldiers lining the area, guarding it. Uh, and you see the Forte sigils on flag posts flying high. Um, and you see as well that there are entrenched crossbowmen uh, up high on these barricades with their uh, crossbows trained towards your direction as you travel towards uh, down the valley. Keep going. Okay. Uh, you get close and you 
Um, here, uh, one of the men call out, Holt, who goes there? Uh, well, uh, my name is Vecni Avim Gray of the uh, Golden Tusk Pirates. I'm the captain of the Tusk Alf. What business do you have in our city? Uh, we have come to partake of your, your, um, your tavern and your liquors and your final scenes. The way inside is closed for now. Come back later. But, uh, she produces the note from Frank Mandrid. It's to Frank Mandrid, but... Oh, I don't remember what the note says. I don't remember what it says either. It was like six months ago. It was a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> um, but essentially, it was basically giving you a rite of passage to enter the city, was what the note was. Um, so the soldier, he takes it from your hand, and he, he reads it over, and he yells back to, his men, to all the men, All right, let them pass. They have business with Frank. Thank you, and she tips her hat. Come, son. Coming. So you uh, continue down. What time of day is it? So we are on Ill Matter 2nd, and it's the morning. So okay. This is about five days since you left, left Queen's Grace. I just haven't had much for you in those days. Okay. Um, you come across this small gathering of hovels. As you're, as you're traveling, they're like lining the walls of like these two cliffs on either side. It's just a small, like small group of houses lining both sides. We'll just keep going until keep we get... Keep going past the, the houses? Okay. Yeah, right. so Does you anything keep... look strange of these houses? Are there people in them? They look like they're probably occupied. Okay. We'll keep going. Okay. So you pass the houses. You see, as you as you continuing continuing to travel down this valley, you see that the valley is uh, opening up, and it's not as narrow as it was. And in front of you, you see this massive uh, city. There are high mountains surrounding it um, on all sides. So you mm -hmm. can see, like in the in the back backdrop of the city, these highest mountains. The city itself has fortified walls, stone walls, uh, serious, very serious um, fortifications guard towers and things like that. You see draped down the walls, uh, you see the Forte banner, and you see the Vigor banner, that, that Sinister Skull banner. You see both banners, and every other banner they're switching. So you see Forte banner, Vigor banner, Forte banner, Vigor banner, going all the way across all sides of these walls. You see these, uh, you could see some of the buildings are kind of tall. They're tall enough that you could see them past the walls. And the, architect the architecture seems to mostly be um, some kind of like a stone or brick, uh, and everything seems to be everything seems to be colored this like rusty orange color, um, including the path leading to the front gate of the city. Uh, the path itself, uh, it's like a like a dug out path of gravel that's like orange. Uh, as we're we're riding up, and Vecni is going to just. Are we? Are there soldiers by us, or are we in the middle of the road by no, ourselves? No, so you you would have passed those soldiers a little while ago before you got to this point. So okay. No, there's no soldiers. There's no one by you currently. Just the two of you. Uh, Vecni is going to just say this to and be like, "What is um, what is Queen Grace relation with Forte and Vigo?" I do not know. Was that um, Caraganda? He mentioned Queen's Grace's. When he was telling us where you're from, blah blah blah. So is they at war together? I don't understand the uh, the um, political the dynamics of this country. It doesn't seem they're necessarily at war together, but they definitely don't like each other. Mm. You roll history because you had a long conversation. I'll with let you roll history because I'm asking you the questions. Sure. Because he asked the he asked the questions. I wouldn't know. All right. Well, give me two seconds. One sippy, two <laughs> Lord Shilter and Queen Inez both talk to length about what, why, what the relationship is with Forte and with Vigor. So I rolled an 18 total. Okay. Um, so you recall, uh, just briefly, the story was essentially that um, the Lorian dynasty ruled Dover for a really long time. Ten years ago, 
Vigor attacked and took the land. Mm. During their invasion, uh, the queen of Dova was was a Cordova. She was related to Queen Inez, her, her aunt. Uh, also, Queen Inez's father, Lord Cordova, uh, was executed when Vigor took the country, as were, as were a lot of Inez's uh, family and friends. Uh, the citizens of Queen's Grace were essentially people from King Lorien's Valley that fled south away from the valley when Vigor came and conquered the valley. Mm. And now they set up shop in this, uh, this was an abandoned castle that was once the capital of Dova millennia ago, and where it was called Dilhanan, which is something that you also learned already. Um, and they rebuilt it to be their capital as they prepare to make alliances and build their strength before they try to take the country back. Okay, so That's they're definitely not aligned at all. They despise Vigor. They, they hate them. And one is an invading army. Yes. Gotcha. Yep, from a different continent. Okay. And Vigor's claim to the throne is what? Their power. Their strength. They took it by force. Okay. But they're from Dova. You don't know too much about their leaders, really? You know that they raised their, much of their army from the region of Dova called the Abandon. But aside from that, you don't really know too much about their leadership. You know, they have the three Fury Lords that rule Dova. I don't think you know any of their names. I don't. Oh, no, you did learn that Odoacer was one of them. Yeah. Okay, so Soren says all that. And Vecna, we're going, all right, well, I guess we, uh, we don't mention that the Rose sent us here. <laughs> we'll keep riding into the city. Okay. So the doors are, the gates to the city are open a little bit as people were like kind of like going in and out kind of. They're not like really going down the, the roads. There are um, wind stands set up right at the entrance of the city where it's like a small little kind of like bazaar area. But it doesn't really look like, a, like an officially sanctioned bazaar. It's just like a couple small stands that seems like mostly the guards of the city use mm. to purchase food and stuff. Find familiar when you cast it. Does it always just stay alive? Mm -hmm. It stays alive until you dismiss it, or it dies. Ah, that's why it's cool. It's always there. It's always there. It's badass. It's a good spell. It does seem to be so. That's how crate used could see. Because you can see through it. Like you can, you go blind and deaf, but you see and hear through your familiar. So you can send him up. To whatever the the radius or the range of it is. That to be honest, I really haven't used too too much except for um, the best one in my opinion, which was suggestion. When Brian and I were able to talk our way out of that one, I have not fought like anything. I have been talking my way out of everything. I like I like it though. I like that you're trying to find other ways to get past the encounters. I'm I'm completely fine with it. I mean, if we had our full force of our group. And we walked up on those six fortes. You would have fought them? Yeah. yeah probably. Cause probably Don or Ian would have got us in a fight. Yeah, Steve would have instantly attacked them. That's yeah. what I meant. Steve, Taking not that Don. Guy's badass armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it had like a dragon's or a demon's, demon's face. face. I can't wear it, so whatever. Still mm -hmm. sell it. It's cool. Walk into town and you see uh, Vigor banners, Forte banners, and this other banner that you've never seen before. You see them all over. And you also see vari the various bigger credos. They're like post they're posted up on like wooden boards and stuff all around the town, uh, on walls and just in signposts, just stuck in the ground. You see uh, sadness and sorrow today and tomorrow. You see despair and sorrow will fill your heart. You see the sun shines its rays for all of our days. Smile its forte. And you see anger. What and the mad fuck? Those are polar opposites. And you see anger and madness, fear and fury. What is this? What? You see all those different creatures, they're just all over. Wait a minute. Just so like you see these banners. There's all sad and sor sorrow today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Smile for Forte. And madness is so cool. Yeah, they're different. They're, they're, different they're all based on emotions? They are all based on emotions. And also, there are the three different flags. Reminds me of those masks that are like a smiling face with sad face. Yeah. Uh, as we're walking through and you see all these creators, Vecting's going to be like, what was they, a bunch of teenage girls? See, our emotions are all over the place. You say you see uh, Forte it's soldiers. He's kind of girl. <laughs> you see Forte soldiers and towns, like regular townspeople, walking all about the city. Uh, the town is very alive and very busy. 
You also see these life-size these life -size statues, like the circle around this large fountain in the town square. You see all these statues, different, different ones. Say that again. You see all these different stone statues circling around this uh, fountain in the middle of the town square. Are there, is this like a bustling city? Are there tons of people or are people yes. staying inside? No, okay. it's very bustling. Okay. I'd say it's definitely more densely populated than Queen's Grace, and it's much, much larger than Queen's Grace as well. And what are, what's, what are the races in this city? They're almost all human. Okay. No drow? You haven't seen a drow since you've arrived. Again, there are statues surrounding this, uh, different statues surrounding this, stone, uh, surrounding this large, really large fountain. And it seems like this fountain, too, is very busy with people constantly going up to it and using it for, like, like almost like drinking water. Oh. And the fountain's, like, it's, like, huge, like, gushing. And people are just drinking out of it? Yep. Uh, so we look around in this, where we are, is this, like, are there shops and... Or is this like a residential area? Because you, you do see an area of <gasps> multiple shops set up on this one street. And it's like, it's like a really long picture like... Picture like Atlantic City. How there's that one street that's got like all those casinos. Mm -hmm. It's like that, but there's not casinos. It's just shops. Just shop, 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 shop. I heard uh, perhaps the uh, Zabexmas is down that way. Perhaps we should head that way. All right, so we'll head down the shop street. So you see uh, what seems to be a, a very, very plain, uh, one of the shops is very plain. There's no special name to it or anything like that. It just says armorer. You see another shop that just says weapons. You should see a shop that just says blacksmith. You see a shop that uh, says for fancy Frank's tailor. You see another That's shop Frank. that says Wand right shop. Wand, like W-A-N-D. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see... You see an alchemist shop. It just says alchemist shop. Literally, that's all it says. You see... Oh, and that's, and that's it for that road, but you see that it looks like it branches off. Like, once you get to the end of the street, there's like a, like a, a large, almost like another town square with more, more shops and more stuff to do further out. But that's it for that main drag. It's a very, very large place. It's by far the biggest place that you've seen. Um, perhaps we stop at these uh, blacksmiths for our roses, whatever. Now let me ask you, did she want it made for her or a normal sized person? That's a good question that I don't believe was asked. You don't know? Now? Well, um... Normal size it is. It can always be made smaller. I suppose. Make it understated, so if you take it down, it won't make a big deal. Sure, sure. Well, I guess she could have worn the ring by itself as a tiara. <laughs> she could have. Is it a gift for the queen? Yes. <laughs> Alright, so we'll stop at that first blacksmith. And go inside. Um, so you walk in, and it's not very busy in here, actually. There's a couple, a couple townspeople, a couple soldiers milling about, looking at stuff, picking up stuff, and you see, uh, a single figure in the back near the forging fire, hammering, cling, cling, cling. You see from behind, his back is this huge, hulking, enormous mass. While he is a humanoid, he's much larger than a person, a normal human person. You can't quite make out his race from behind, though. Hmm. Well, uh, perhaps Huge you take... hulking back. You take care of... Uh, Rose's... Whatever she wished for, and I'm just going to peruse the weapons. Sure. So, um... I'm going to... Kind of, like, head on over. I assume this would be the blacksmith, correct? And, uh, do I He's see the only like a, person that appears to be working. There. Do I see like a desk of any kind? You know, something We're like looking that. for a guy named Tiger Keg. Tiger Keg. Good. Do I see like a desk or anything? It's okay. 
Uh, I'm, I'm gonna like no. walk up. I'm gonna walk like up. A I'm gonna use minor illusion. No. I'm gonna kind of like snap my finger and I'm, I'm gonna make that sound that bell does. You know when you uh, like ding. Yeah. Um. So he does one more hammer stroke. Bing. And then he stops. And you see a figure. And, and as it it looks as this, this person looks back and forth, you see the sides of its face, and it's a very <clears throat> almost like a monstrous looking face it looks a little bit similar to the creatures that you saw outside the blood mist cabin that were not orcs but also a little different though the gnolls no no oh the ogres okay and and again you i don't believe you knew it i don't believe i know but did, you, did you know it was an their ogres and again, i don't remember my wand my i don't think hand, you knew that it's gonna go bing again it turns and you see, again, this monstrous face, but it looks a little bit different, and he's a, it's a little bit smaller than those creatures were. Okay. And it looks up at you, and it says, What do you want? I'm looking for the blacksmith, known as Tiger Keg. I am him. What business do you have? I am in need of blacksmithing. <laughs> okay. Hear, what, what's the job? I hear you're some of the you were the one of the best in this in, in the land. He narrows his eye a little bit and looks at you peculiarly and he says, Where'd you hear that? And I hear it from all kinds of folk all around the town. It kinda surprises me a little, but okay. What do you need done? Um so I I gotta pull out this ring and uh Asked that the setting be made into a tiara? Question mark. Is that what it is? They didn't want you to use the setting of the ring to turn into a tiara. Yeah. He he picks up the he picks up the ring and he looks it over. Uh, is there any specific kind of tiara that you want? I'm, I'm not a, I'm not really a jeweler. I don't. I mean, I could probably do it. Yeah. You know what? When I, when I read the mission, I was like, Why would a blacksmith make a tiara? Hmm? Okay. He agrees. Uh, well, based upon the skills that I have heard, um, I, I believe that you'd be able to make this into a, a, a beautiful tiara that would fit a normal person's head. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks up at you as you say that, the normal person's thing, and he, and he sets it down, uh, on this barrel, and... He's offended. For, no, no, he looks, he looks very, just confused, he goes... I, I'm I'm sorry, but I'm just very confused. Someone told you that I'm the best blacksmith in the land, and asked you to make a tiara out of. I I, I don't. Know, could you explain this a little better? Who sent you to do this? This just doesn't make sense to me. So, um, with Soren's wand uh, still at hand, he's he's just gonna say, you know, I'm just gonna need you to stop asking questions and do this for me. Any cast suggestions? Does do does this creature know when you do that? If he fails, if he fails, he knows, right? Uh, no. Hold on. I think if he fails, you know that he casts a spell on oh. you. Hold on. The target must make a wisdom save. There's no a failed save. It pursues the course of action you describe. Right. Hold on. It does not. No, you're thinking of charm. Oh, it won't know mm. anyway. Charm. Just we. Yeah, we, we had this discussion last time. So. That's right. Yeah. You're gonna fail. So, because your important? It's important. It's a four and a five. Seventeen. Four. Okay. <laughs> ha! You got rid of wish. Joe figured out a way around it. I mean, not wish. Lucky. I did get rid of lucky, which I'm glad. Why? You guys already passed like every single every single check already. Yeah. Yeah. So you rolled a fourteen. You said. A uh, seventeen. 17, yeah, you would have passed it, but you okay. it. So, uh, you suggest a course of action, which I did, limited to a sentence or two, which was done. The magical influence is a creature you can see within range, it can hear you, understand you, creatures you, you uh, can't, that, well, so, hold on, hold on. Creatures that can't be charmed are immune to this effect. So, well done. Can it be charmed? The suggestion you make... He can is, be. Yeah. I so don't see why it wouldn't. Well, he can't be, I think. Yeah, it's, 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 it's important, obviously, saying it, but... 
Um, asking the creature to stab itself, obviously you can't do. You can't the, tell it to hurt itself. Yeah. The, the target must make a wisdom saving throw and a failed save, which it failed. It pursues the course of action to describe to the best of its ability. The suggested course of action can continue the entire duration, which is eight hours. Um, okay. If the suggestion activity can be completed in a shorter time, the spell ends and the subject finishes what it was asked to do. You can also specify... Now how long does it last? Eight, eight hours. hours. You okay. Can, you can also specify conditions that will trigger, um, but yeah, that's it. If you or any of your companions damage a target, the spell ends. It says nothing, though, about it making you aware at all. So he takes the ring, and he says, um, he says, uh, all right, I'll, uh, I'll try my best, but um, I, I really don't usually work with stuff like this. I might fuck it up. <laughs> okay. So the weapons, are there anything special about these weapons? There's no, in this, in this blacksmithing shop, in fact, not only do you not notice any special weapons, but the, the really basic weapons that are here, they, they seem pretty shoddily and shittily made. They seem like much worse than the weapons that you saw in the Queen's Grace blacksmith. I'm starting to think this whole thing was a setup. Feels that way, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. They, yeah, why would you ask a blacksmith to make a tiara? Yeah. And then this tiara make, I mean, this. Ogre makes shitty shit. Shitty shit. And she didn't ask us to do anything with, like, there's no specific. I don't know. Well, she, she talked. Hey, can you tell him to make this into a tiara, but also had a knife in it? Like, <laughs> no, she didn't ask for anything like that. I don't know. I wasn't in the room. Uh -huh. All I know is mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, when should we return? I mean, I'm going to have to find someone to help me out. How to, how to make, how to. To figure out how to do this. Uh, give me two days, I guess. Two days seems reasonable. Okay. See you in two days. Good day to you, sir. Well, well, what about payment? I'm sure we can discuss that when we're arrival back. You didn't really say what kind of tiara. Do you, do you need gems? Stop asking questions. He did say that. Okay, so he won't ask anything. <laughs> he won't ask anything else. So just nod. I mean, fair. Enough. We're going to return with a hunk of steel with a diamond sticking out the top. <laughs> that is what we, she wanted. We, we told them we told them we wanted a TR and we wanted the set for the set stone to be a part of it. She yep. she gave us no other corrections either. That's I, true. I wasn't in the room. That was you and your sister. You're right. Do I remember you're smiling? Like do I do I was there She really didn't give you much directions. She just Told you to have the setting put into a TR, and that's all she really said. There you go. Put so. a setting into TR. But why would she choose Tiger Keg? She might know him. Maybe. But he... Anyway, good day to you, sir. Oh, I'll see you in a couple days. In a couple days. In fact, he's just looking at a dagger and be like, What the fuck is this sheet? It's made like shit. <laughs> like, it'll work, <laughs> but it, look, it looks like garbage. So she puts it down and she looks over at a short sword and she's thinking the same thing. It's like dented like it, like someone fucked up while they're trying to forge it. And she, Apprentice, perhaps? She sees Soren walking away from the counter and she's just like... Have you seen the quality of these weapons? Unfortunately, I have. She picks up a sword and the blade falls off. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they're that bad? Yeah, they're, they're made like shit. Sora kind of like scratches his head and goes, well, that's the most important part. Um, so she didn't say anything else besides take it to Tiger Keg. Give it to Tiger Keg. Is, is, is that it's Tiger Keg? That's what he says. Well, is it? Did you make sure? <laughs> I didn't check his ID. Why would she have a, uh, a blacksmith make a tiara? Maybe Wouldn't that be a jeweler? Maybe she wanted this shitty work. Maybe there's a purpose behind it. Was she getting a helm instead? I do not ask the reasons, woman. It's a very wise for young men. Well, anyway, um... I don't want any of these weapons, 
but uh, a drink I do. So shall we head to the tavern? We shall. So we'll go out and get our horses and head to the tavern. <clears throat> so it's in a different part of town. You pass by this busy bazaar. You see this huge fucking tavern with a big sign out front that says, and unlike the rest of the buildings in this town, you don't see any sigils. <clears throat> You don't see any signs that say, like, smile, it's forte, vigor stuff, anger and ma madness. You don't see any of that. Just this really, really, really homey-looking tavern, really huge, with a sign that says, Morgan's Tavern. I imagine that if this was a scene in a cartoon, this would be the point where Vecni acts like Bugs Bunny and, like, straightens out and, like, hearts <laughs> come out of his eyes. You know, like, little big. Uh, I kind of think that I'm too... If uh, Vecni notices it and she goes, again, she talks to Soren and is like, I don't understand all these uh, emotional sayings on every other building. Like, look at this one. It says, sad and sorrow, good for tomorrow. This one says, fury and blood piss or whatever it says. And this one says, smile for forte. We're like, what is going on? With these different army? emotions. Perhaps there is hidden meaning behind these messages. Um, you know it's easier being on a ship in the middle of the ocean. Is there a, a stable by the... No. Oh. Is there like a hitching post for the horses? Yeah. Okay. The stables were uh, at the entrance. Mm. Oh. Well, you could have mentioned that. I just didn't think... Can we say that we left the horses at the stables? Sure. Okay. So then... I'll head into the tavern. Okay. Uh, you walk in, and it's just as big out inside as it looked like it was outside, maybe even bigger. All right, how many TVs? There's no TVs. You see tons of... It's very busy. You see tons of patrons here. It's not rowdy, though, for how much business is here. It's unlike... It's actually unlike the other busy bars that you've seen. Instead of seeing, like, tons of people just meshing together, bar fights, people drinking at the bar all getting together, <coughs> this bar is... Very, it's very strangely isolated. Fun with Dick and Jane. It seems like you have the different group. What? You seen the movie Fun with Dick and Jane? I did. When you can't say statistics. <laughs> statistics. I like when he's in the uh, all black getup with the goggles. He's like, <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, Dad. Yeah. Uh, you see um, that the different group. There seem to be different groups, multiple different groups that are very isolated from the rest of the bar, um, but. There's tons of business, tons of people. Drinks are flowing. There's serving girls all around. Uh, every table seems to be full of different char colorful characters. Um, at the bar, you do see several uh, wanted posters behind the bar, just like you've seen in most of the bars so far. Do you recognize any of the wanted posters? That's what I was going to ask. I was going to say we head up to the bar and want to see if I notice myself on the wanted poster. Do you notice anyone in the wanted posters? That is a question that... I was asked. Answer. These are the want posters. <clears throat> the King of One. Oh, that's a lofty one. Lord Winninger. Oh. Lord Weld. Commander Leopard. Leopard. That doesn't sound familiar. You met him Who, once. Which Lord one Craven. Lord Win Henry. Winnegar is the lispy guy that you met in the one camp at the beginning. Zeros. Pure blood. Lord Henry. Brigand of opponent by. Oh, Zoros. this one might be worth going for because the. He's a brigand, which is like a a highwayman, or just like a, a thug. Doesn't respect rule of authority, political criminal. May have joined dogs. And the opponent's bog's pretty close. Prince Lorian? Yeah, we're never going to get that one. Lord Zambini Undara. Huh. But where's that one that I gave you? We should look for that one, because the opponent's bog is pretty close. Your bud? Yeah. That's just any random jerk, right? Yeah. I mean, compared to all these other rewards, it's really low, so shouldn't be too bad. Lord Craven. Why does that sound familiar? 
He's the leader of Blood Mist. Mm. You guys met him. He was at the party as well. So Blood Mist we... was at the party? You don't remember? They, no. gave Roland, they gave Roland the finger in a box. So, so Wait, what? What party was this? Posters are sitting inside Queen's Grace right now. Last, the last session. Give right. a finger in the box. I don't remember that. Right, Dan? What's that? Pretty much everyone on these wanted posters are sitting inside of Queen's Grace right now. No, that's not true. No, the King of One isn't. No, they're, they're, they're people from all different factions that don't ally with, don't ally with Vigor. You see, these appear to, so when you're looking through the wanted posters, you guys are able to surmise pretty easily that these appear to be enemies of Vigor. They're like high level em enemies of Vigor. The Zaros, I don't know who that is. Pure Blood and Lord Craven seem like easy targets. Yeah, Lord Craven, you've met a couple times. I think maybe three times. And he was at the party. You don't remember the two girls gave Roland the box with the finger in it. Um, so you also notice uh, a couple, a couple interesting things. Uh, you see a gnome playing music and singing on a stage. The gnome looks familiar. Oh my God, it's on a stage. He's gonna get. Thanks for watching, everybody. This guy go to bed. He's also got an hour drive home. Thanks for watching this episode of Power Word Nerd. Be sure to follow us on all social media sites.